Meteorologist Lauren Roundcrans here. We are looking at the seven day tropical outlook. And as I step into the green screen uh, on the graphics, we've got Franklin, which is now a category four as of a special 735 AM update from the National Hurricane Center. Edalia's 8 AM is in, but really no major changes as of yet. Remember those complete advisories come in on the fives and the 11s. So our next 11 AM update will have a an updated uh, complete advisory with track and intensity forecast. Now Franklin staying off of our coast, thank goodness, because it is a very strong hurricane and hurricane hunters indicated that it did continue to increase from the 5 AM hour to just 730. So pretty incredible stuff here with very warm waters off of the coast and bringing rip currents some significant surf and swell our way. Let's zoom in on Tropical Storm Edalia because right now uh, new overnight is that we have a little bit stronger of a tropical storm and also it's on the move. It was stationary last night and now it's starting to kick up to the north. It's going to impact the western tip of Cuba today. It's about 100 miles to the south of that as we speak. Now with the latest cone as of 8 a.m. It does show it becoming a hurricane within the next day. And that could happen as early as today or it could happen overnight and as we're waking up tomorrow morning, a cat one. But then undergoing what's called rapid intensification as we head throughout the day Tuesday and into Wednesday. A major hurricane is forecast to make landfall somewhere along the big bend of Florida on early Wednesday morning. Computer models have consistently shown a pretty good consensus as far as the track goes. The intensity is a little tricky, right? It looks like the ceiling. We don't really know how high we're going to reach it with that intensity at this point with computer models coming in stronger than what the current National Hurricane Center is showing. So we will monitor that because we do have conditions that will be favorable for intensification in the Gulf of Mexico with low wind shear and also some very warm record level sea surface temperatures in the Gulf. Franklin real quickly is now a cat four. Remember the updated advisory will probably show this next eye count as a four uh, and it will continue up toward the north and the west of Bermuda as we head into the next day or so eventually staying back out to sea. But again, even though it's hundreds of miles off of our coast, we're feeling its impacts today. Rip current risk out there at the beaches, 90 degrees out there with rough season surf. High tide was first thing at 6 a.m. So now as of about 820 this morning, we're headed back toward a low tide. But remember, if you're traveling out to the beaches today, it'll be a bit breezy. It'll be uh, also rough in the waters. Now, as we look at Tropical Storm Edalia, the big three for us here at home, Wednesday, that's our stormiest day. We do need to prepare for this storm, like we're going to see uh, some strong wind gusts throughout the day on Wednesday, some pretty heavy bouts of rain, and possibly, possibly some power outages and an isolated tornado or two. So we could even see those Cat 1 gusts as far inland as Lake City and the Weather Service in Jacksonville. Um, I mean, of course, it's making landfall as a major hurricane. We could possibly see a brief period where near the I-75 corridor on Wednesday morning, we see Cat 2 gusts. All right, we're not talking sustained winds with that. We're talking gusts, but still um, a pretty intense system headed our way, so we really shouldn't be taking it lightly. Today's your day to get those preps in place, especially while we have the more tranquil conditions. And I would say today and tomorrow, you have the time. Clean up around the yard. Make sure the trash cans are put away and secured. Patio furniture is secured. Uh, I know we're going to be taking the swings and the swing set off because those can blow around very easily as well. We just want to make sure that those don't become flying debris when we do get some strong rain bands roll through. So our future cast today, just to back it up again, very typical for this time of year. We'll have that onshore breeze. We've had a few coastal showers this morning, very few and far between. They'll build this afternoon, pull out toward the west, and then by I-75 corridor by that dinner time frame, clearing out tonight. Into tomorrow, starting off dry as well. But again, we're going to be focusing on Idalia in the Gulf of Mexico, moving up to the north, and it's going to be east of Tampa, I'd say, by late Tuesday and into the sunset time frame. That's right there when we should have our preps here in place at home because we might actually see some brief uh, downpours blow in from the south as early as I'd say dinner time or sunset on Tuesday. The heaviest of the weather really starts to pick up as we head toward 
the pre dawn time frame on Tuesday. So if you're joining us at 430 in the morning on Tuesday, good morning, Jacksonville, or excuse me, Wednesday, good morning, Jacksonville, we will likely be watching the wind and the rain pick up. I'd say it gets uh, worse by later in the morning as that core is pulling inland again as a major making landfall, but then likely still at cat one at least strength as it's pulling across the first coast and moving off the coast of Georgia as we head throughout the day on Wednesday. Good thing is it's a fast mover. Another good thing is we do have good consensus with the computer models. These spaghetti plots uh, are tightly clustered, which means there's high confidence in where this storm is headed. We have a trough that's digging in across the southeast, and then we also have an area of high pressure that's going to nudge its way in between Edalia and Franklin. So that's going to help to pull it up to the north, and then it's eventually going to get kicked out uh, offshore. Now, hurricane watches are in effect for inland North Florida at this point. That's as of the 5 a.m. advisory, but the Hurricane Center uh, and the Weather Service in Jacksonville saying that these are likely going to be extended as to be expected. So don't be surprised if on that First Coast News app later this morning you get an alert saying that other folks or areas are included in some of these watches. Those will eventually be upgraded to warnings as the time gets closer. Remember the difference between the watch and the warning. The watch means you are expected to see those hurricane force conditions in the next 36 to 48 hours. However, now's the time to take the preparations. Warning is when you really need to be uh, all done with those preps and you're expecting those conditions to move into the area shortly. Columbia, Baker, Bradford, Union County, you're included in that hurricane watch. And so we could see those cat one gusts 74 or greater roof damage, large branches snapped off of trees that can't be ruled out as well as six to eight inches of rainfall. I did drop that just briefly from what you might have seen on our graphics with Tim last night. And the reason being is because it's a fast mover. We are still going to have some heavy pockets of rain. We know this very, very well across the first coast. Those heavy pockets of rain, we can see those rainfall totals pile up very quickly. But again, six to eight inches of rainfall expected. And now Duval County, two to four inches of rainfall. But that can happen pretty quickly. So isolated amounts uh, even higher than that. Backing it up to the winds, I would say we'll have gusts that are just shy. So think tropical storm force gusts, uh, so shy of hurricane force here in Duval County. But because of the situation, the windy conditions, the rain that we're expecting as well, power outages possible. And that goes for the entire area. But Duval County, we want you to prepare to be without power for a couple of days at, you know, of, of course, with worst case scenario, you want to make sure you have plenty of water, uh, non-perishable items as well, uh, and the medications, things that you need for the babies, etc. Isolated tornadoes can't be ruled out, especially in some of those tropical tails, right? We get those really strong rain bands that are far removed from the center sweeping around the storm. So what we'll see uh, into the next couple of days, as Idalia's beginning to move closer. Those winds are going to pick up out of the southeast for us, eventually blow more uh, out of the south, southwest as the storm is pulling up across the area, and then it begins to quiet down by Wednesday evening. I would say it looks like the worst, at least with wind future cast here, showing things really ramping up after sunrise and then through the mid afternoon time frame on Wednesday. Here's the expected rainfall again. Heaviest going to be out toward where that core is actually passing by, but most of the area is going to be on the right side of that storm, the dirty side of the storm. So keep that in mind. That's where we expect most of our severe weather with tropical cyclones. As we look at uh, Monday, Tuesday, those are your days to get the preps done. Lower 90s, uh, lots of sun today with some of those downpours moving into the area. Tuesday, we'll start to watch some of those storms sink in from the south, south to north. And then Wednesday is our day. We've got to make those plans uh, to get ready as soon to be Hurricane Idalia makes impact here across the First Coast.